Welcome back to the Real Estate Sit Down presented by Double B Homes and the Pemberton Home Team. This is episode 29. I'm Blair Berg. This is Jaden Mullet. How you doing, Jaden? I'm doing well. And yourself? Not too bad. Just got from back from Sorry. vacation. At the time of recording, today is Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. And the interest rate for a 30-year conventional loan is 7.08. Keep going down. Yeah. Fingers no, crossed. It's looking good. But um, three yeah, months low. Sure. I mean, while we're on that topic... Um, if you, if anything comes up in your social media feeds, real estate related, I'm sure you've seen articles predicting next year, they'll do four interest rate cuts, six interest rate cuts, obviously known as a crystal ball. I wouldn't take those as, I wouldn't take that as, you know, set in stone. I would say look for rate cuts next year. There's anyone predicting how many there's going to be. That's impossible. Yeah, for sure. You're not going to get everything. Take everything with a grain of salt. Exactly. So today we're going to start with Deal Doctors, and we're actually bringing in a guest, Jackson Dunnell, one of our teammates here, who actually just bought his own quadplex, I believe. So he's going to tell us kind of the details about that, how he structured it, and how he came upon it. Phenomenal. Super excited. Well, Jackson, technically welcome back. Yeah, yeah. Second time being on the show. Yeah. How you do? How you been? Good. So exciting stuff. Uh, got yourself an investment property. I'm excited to learn all the details. I guess walk us through, you know, from how you found it to how you closed on it. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, actually found this property on the MLS. Um, this is my second quadplex that I've had on contract. First one fell through, um, just weren't able to make the numbers make sense. Um, been kind of on the look for a while now. Um, just kind of waiting for that right property to um, come on the market and um, the perfect one kind of fell in my fell in my uh, in my lap, and yeah, we were able to kind of put it. wasn't wasn't It just kind of happened out of nowhere. Just kind of you know found it, made the numbers work, made sense. So um, put it under contract. That's awesome. So do you want to walk us through? So is it already occupied? Yes, it is. Yeah, so it's um, it's fully occupied right now. Um, I bought it FHA three and a half percent down. Um, so I am going to owner occupy it. Um, we'll have to kick out a renter, um, fortunately, but, um, FHA, you have 60 days to owner occupy a unit. Um, so actually it's kind of nice. Um, I'll actually get, you know, 60 days of rent, um, before I actually have to move in. So which th- that'll equate to a little over six grand, That's um, huge. which is nice to be able to just put into our investment or my investment bank um, for like, you know, emergencies or anything like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it just kind of happened um, where, you know, it just, the numbers made sense. Um, I did a whiteboard kind of thing here um, just so I can, I'm a kind of a visual person. Um, and so the purchase price was 290,000 um, with three and a half percent down. My down payment would be 10,150. Uh, I was able to roll my commission into it. Um, yeah, yeah, people, yeah, I'm going to have to pay taxes on that, but that's a no whole nother, you know, section that we can talk about someday with cost segregation. Um, so my cash to close is 2320 um, Off of that 290000 I was able to get uh, 6% seller paid closing costs, um, which was huge because that covers my 3% seller paid closing costs. As of right now, um, we are able to take that 3% extra in seller paid closing costs that we have and buy the rate down to five two five. That's awesome. Um, if you wouldn't mind sharing, so what does your monthly payment kind of look like? Uh, so monthly payments going to be roughly around, um, 1900 bucks. Wow. 1900 in the rent roll. Do you have the numbers on that? Yeah. So as of right now, um, so it's six total bedrooms, there's two two bedroom units and two one bedroom units. Um, the two two bedrooms are at one's at eleven fifty, one's at a thousand, and then the two one bedroom units are at five fifty, which are both significantly under market value. Um, so kind of the plan with that is to you know owner occupy um, one of those, uh, flip it while I'm occupying it, um, make some re- uh, renovations, and then get another renter in there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it should cash flow, uh, after I move out in a year, um, you know, once I get those rents up to, you know, market value around 
fifteen to 1700 bucks a month. That's huge. Yeah. That's a really good margin, uh, especially for your first one. That's why, and we actually have been talking about this recently. We just had an episode we talked about um, first time home buyers yeah. saying that they can't afford a home. And when I, and my response to that is you can't buy your dream home. Right. I think a lot of people, if they were to do something like this and yes, it's a little bit easier for us cause we can use our commissions, right. um, kind of help out with the down payment situation, but it still is an option. If you can afford that down payment, your monthly in a quadplex, you should be getting paid to live at that point. Yeah. So even when I do live there for the year, um, the other two, three rent, uh, rental units actually cover my entire, yeah. entire I'll actually, actually cash flows while I'll live there. I'll actually make a couple hundred bucks a month. So essentially I'll live for free. Plus exactly. Money. Cover your utilities and stuff too. So, yeah. and that's what I say is really nice. And like I say, when people say I can't afford to buy a home, you can't afford to buy your dream home. If you use right. programs like this and you can buy a quadplex, is living in a unit of a quadplex our dream home? No, no, not really. It's a good starter. It's a good stepping stone. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, if you don't own a home, you're probably renting something right. similar. Well, so, so if you, it's essentially like you're living somewhere where you would probably rent if you didn't own a home. Yeah. But you're getting it for free. Right. Or, or a little bit at the end of the month, like yeah. in your pocket. And it's it's only it's really only one year, and then after that year, say I, I make cash flow seventeen hundred bucks a month. That's another twenty thousand dollars. Um towards the amount of money that I make per year. Well, yeah. That's and then passive. And it's all a business write off. So you can use that against your taxes yeah. at, during the year two on the money you make. And it, it, the list of benefits just goes Tax on benefits. and on. And then when you go to buy your next home and who knows, maybe you're going to do this a couple times, get right. a couple under your belt. Or if you want to go for that single family home, now you can use that income towards qualifying for your next home. Right. So that's something we talk about all the time is, is it harder to buy a home now than it has been sure but there still are ways to do it and yeah. you can get into a home ownership situation it just might not be your dream home right away right. but even in the best of times it's very rare your first home is your dream home right and if anything you become an accidental investor in this and you're cash flowing money right yeah and it wasn't like um you know i found this property off market or anything like this was on the mls um it was available to everybody um i just happened to kind of stumble upon it and um, you know, the listing agent had another offer and that's kind of how I was able to manipulate the numbers. Um, just because he kind of did tell me that offer price, which doesn't always happen. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, that's how I was able to manipulate the numbers to get, you know, 6% seller paids, um, you know, cover my closing costs to be able to buy that rent down, uh, to make it cash flow even more, which was kind of ideally what I've been looking for, for like the last you know, four to five months is something that I can roll my commission into buy FHA three and a half percent down and then deal doctor it enough so I can get 6% seller paid so I can, you know, get into a property, an investment property for $2,320. And I'm going to, you know, have a thousand percent return after my first year. Yeah. And I mean, cash to close that 2320, that's probably like two months worth of rent. So it's not like you're breaking the bank to even put that yeah. cash down. Well, so because I have 60 days before I have to own or occupy it, I'll get a little over $6,000 in rents, which is three times the amount of what I just put down. So I'll get my rent. my Pays it back right yeah, away. The amount of money that I put down right away. Yeah. So and that's what I mean. It's, it's stories like that. And that's kind of why I had you on here today because – so many people don't realize how easy it can be. And like you said, it was on the market. Right. It's not like you did extra research to find it off market. And do you, how many days was on market? Two weeks. Yeah. So it's something that everyone had access to. Cause right. I think it's a myth that so many people think it's so complicated to do. Yeah. I think you gotta, you know, the, you gotta know the avenues, which brings us back to work. If you have a dream of home ownership, just talk to an agent. Right. Because we know these programs. And even if I say, because I have a lot of people say like, you know, is it too early for me to start my home search? It's never too early. Right. You can talk to your real estate agent. You can talk to his lender and they know the program. So you can at least get set up on that path. Right. And for most people coming up with that 2320 to start is not that big of a deal. Right. So, Or even if like you have, you know, other friends who are interested in possibly like talking about doing some investing together, like, that total, your three and a half percent down payment, you guys owner occupy that with a couple of your buddies, then you're, 
your total, you know, your, your down payment's only $10,000, $10,000. Like yeah. you could go in on it 50, 50 with, you know, somebody else. And after the year you get it rented out, you cash flowing, you know, 1700 bucks, you're making, you know, 20 grand a year between you and somebody else. That's another 10 grand. That's, you know, a hundred more than a hundred percent return on what your original investment was. Yep. And so that just goes to say, and something we talk about every week, I feel like I sound like a broken record, but there are deals in every market. Yeah. You can make something work. It might, some markets might be more a little complicated. It might be a little harder to find deals, but you can. Right. And that's kind of what you showed. So I appreciate you showing us that. And do you have anything, any other like kind of tips out there or anything that helped you get that deal done? No, I mean, you just kind of have to, you know, have an idea of what you want and be willing to be okay. With. Like, like I, I waited for this kind of right moment for, for months and, um, just was able to jump at the bit when I came across my kind of plate. So, yeah. And I think that's important too. Cause I think a lot of people say like, I want to get into home like real estate investing and then they get impatient. They buy something just to buy something. Right. So it's good that you waited for something that numbers made sense and right. then you made your move. So, yeah, I mean there's, and there's so many other, you know, benefits outside of just like, you know, being able to cash flow down the road, you can cost segregate a fourplex, um, which is a whole, you can do a cost segregation study. Um, so essentially that's why I rolled my commission into it. It's just because if I do a cost segregation study, uh, likely I probably won't have to pay taxes next year. Yep. Um, just because I can write off this entire property. Uh, I don't know the exact details, but you can hire somebody to do it for like two grand, but they'll save you thousands and thousands of dollars, um, in tax money. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think similar to mine, when I bought my duplex, I waived my commission to get the seller paid. Right. But you got the seller paid on top of that. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, other than that, thanks for coming on, Jackson. Yeah. It's awesome to have you again. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we'll hop into the comments section. Recently, Jaden put out a clip that we had that was talking. It was a clip that was talking about how if you own a $350,000 home and you're in a neighborhood with $90,000 foreclosures, it's going to bring down your equity. So it's actually beneficial for investors to come in and fix that property up and put that inventory back into the market. It benefits everybody. Um, it was kind of dispelling real estate investor hate. So I think it's funny. We got this comment that said, it's rare that an investor can benefit a neighborhood. Will you describe happened to the house next door to me? Every house in the neighborhood is around 200 K except that house. Once the remodel was done, it was sold for well over 300 K. Now we have a neighbor who resents his mortgage payment and the house is not even assessed at the value he paid. I would like to start off and say, it sounds like a made up story to me too. Yeah, just I don't because believe a house that's only $200,000 houses and then one that went for like three fifty, let's say seems far fetched to it me. It, 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 but what that guy doesn't understand is that equity pull from your neighbor's house and your value of your property works both ways. Exactly. If that house is worth X amount of dollars and the one next to it's worth X amount of dollars, they're both going to compete and they're both going to clash for the values of each property. One's going to inflate, one's going to deflate. It just is what it is. Yeah. When it comes to equities in neighborhoods, it's the old adage that a rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah. One house appraising at a higher value is good for your home value. Yes. That now the neighborhood is worth more is worth more so when you go to sell your house you're probably going to get more for that um it was funny too because i kind of wish i would have pulled the other comments he had too because as people disputed him in the comment oh section he kind of just kept moving the goalposts because when someone refuted that and said that what we just said that yeah. that a good appraisal is that actually good for you. the value of your home well then he just changed the goalpost to oh great my home is worth now more so i have to pay more taxes thanks so he can even acknowledge that his home value is going up. So obviously, and even then, if you ever look, bank appraisals and valuations of home is very different than what the county appraises at. The county yeah, is usually absolutely. much lower than what the bank appraises at. Anyway. Right. So the reason we bring it up is it does work. That is that. Um, we will move on to FAQs. Blair. What do lower interest rates mean for home prices? So this is a great question because we are seeing, and now we've talked about the first, we've talked about for the last couple of weeks, 
that as we are heading into 2024, interest rates are coming down. Yep. That's just a fact. And I have a lot of home buyers that are saying that they want to wait for interest rates to come down. Well, you might have a lower interest rate, but the home prices are going to skyrocket because you're going to be in competition again with people. Like I said, I've had a listing that's been sitting for a little while. It's kind of a luxury rural property and not a lot of traction. And then when we hit there, the day last Friday, I believe we actually dropped to 7%. It was like maybe a little lower, like high sixes. And I got like four calls on this property. Yeah. So if they all decide to make a move on it, now they're competing against each other. Right. So you're going to be, we're going to go back to the times of paying over list price and appraisal guarantees, stuff like that. So lower interest rates are great. Obviously they make homes more affordable, but in that trade off, something has to change. So if interest rates come down, the supply, the everyone's going to be rushing back to the market and then we're going to home prices are going to skyrocket because everyone's going to try to get back in. So kind of have to pick your poison with that one very all, simple economics it really all comes down to what can you afford and then make that work for you yeah don't wait for an arbitrary interest rate number just because your dad's uncle's pen pal said yeah. it's not a great time to buy yeah right run the numbers with your lender and if it works it works get in and then worry about a refinance or something like that don't wait for an arbitrary number drop a lot of stuff in the news about buyer's agents what yep. is the value of using a buyer's agent gosh i mean that that is such a loaded question because what a lot of people don't understand is that a buyer's agent is somebody who is completely removed from a property, from your family, and they are simply a professional service provider. A buyer's agent is not somebody that's going to be in your family, so they're going to they're going to be able to give you what you need for your best interest. They're going to be able to have access to tools that not the common person is going to have. They're going to be able to go on the MLS. They're going to be able to make professional calls for you. And another big one that I would just say right now is contracts. If you are thinking as a home buyer that you're going to want to go straight to the listing agent, there's a lot of other stuff that goes with that because now that listing agent is not only doing contracts and everything else for the sellers, but they're also doing a dual agency where they're going to also now do all of your paperwork. What happens when you throw that all on one person? God knows. Who already had a working relationship with the other party. Correct. Previously. Now you're just a random Joe Schmo that's coming in to just buy the property and you're a nobody. I mean, good agents are out there. But in the common scenario where a seller's agent is just listing a property, you coming in as a buyer's agent being forced to work with that agent without having a specific buyer's agent that's working in your best interest, a best of luck to you yep. in, in simple terms. I mean- Buyer's agents can do an unbelievable amount of things for you that you can't do yourself. It's kind of going back to the the negotiation like we talked about. If you're going into court, you want a lawyer, right? If you're going to buy a house, you want a professional that is in the market every single day that is out there seeing homes that's going to be able to educate you on showings. They're going to be able to negotiate for you professionally. They're going to be able to help you with contracts when a lender sends you back a pre-approval letter or some type of stipulation that you need turned in for a clear to closing, a buyer's agent is going to be able to help you with that. You're not going to sit here. You're not going to have to wait for a listing agent that ultimately probably doesn't care about you that much. They're just seeing you as a number and a paycheck to sign a paper. You're going to have value in having a buyer's agent that is going to be working for you. They're going to be on your side and they're going to have value towards you. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And like I said, and you mentioned it, I always compare it to the court of law. I yeah. wouldn't want to walk into a courtroom and ask the opposing team's lawyer to also represent me. No, absolutely so not. It's... I would want to bring my own lawyer that has my best interests in mind and is going to fight for me. Absolutely. It's it's like a, it's like a relationship. If you're going to go and get a divorce, you're not going to use the same damn lawyer. All right. As always comment on the videos we love responding to your guys's comments uh remember to like and subscribe this has been another episode of the real estate sit down and we'll see you next time